We meet Will Randall, who is driving along a deserted road in Vermont on a winter night when he suddenly collides with an animal on the road. As he gets out of the car and approaches the injured animal, he realizes that it is a wolf. He initially believes the wolf is dead and attempts to move it off the road. However, the wolf suddenly springs to life and bites Will. He quickly flees the scene, and we see the wolf watching him, hinting that there might be something unusual about this particular wolf. Back in New York, we learn that Will is the editor-in-chief at a prestigious book publishing company, but his job seems to be in jeopardy due to recent setbacks. Concerned about the wolf bite, Will decides to seek medical attention. At a party, Will deliberately dampens the mood by derailing the small talk with real-life problems, making it clear that he's not in the best of spirits that evening. Shortly after, he learns from the owner of the publishing company why he's about to lose his job. The owner tells him that his successor is simply hungrier and more dedicated than Will, who's been in the business for 30 years and has lost some of his drive. However, Will is offered the opportunity to oversee the Eastern European market instead, which has become attractive after the fall of the Soviet Union. Will, though, doesn't seem very enthusiastic about this proposal. Shortly after, he meets Laura Alden, the daughter of his boss, with whom Will immediately gets along well. She helps him cope with the shock he just received, and he tells her that he now has the choice between no job and a job that no one wants. He's inclined to choose the one nobody wants rather than being unemployed at his age. When Will returns to the party, he informs his wife and Stuart about what just happened. Stuart reveals that he will be Will's successor, to which Will reacts with little enthusiasm. The next day, Will sleeps through it entirely, waking up only in the evening. In the bathroom, he's puzzled by how strange the wound inflicted by the wolf looks. The next day, Will seems to have an unusually sharp sense of smell as he notices the tequila breath of a man on his way to the office. Shortly after, he appears not to need his glasses anymore, casually realizing that he's not wearing them while reading. His sense of hearing has also become incredibly acute, allowing him to hear practically everything in his immediate surroundings. Will understandably appears very puzzled by all of this. Back home, he smells a scent on his wife's clothes that he doesn't like. He follows the scent trail, which leads him straight to his successor, Stuart Swinton, where he catches his wife in the act. Without a word, Will leaves, deeply hurt. The next day at work, he confronts Stuart and threatens to get even with him. He then informs his close allies at the company that he plans to start his own venture and poach the best authors from the publisher. His friends are excited about the idea and are eager to join him. Will subsequently meets with his boss and informs him that he won't take on Eastern Europe. On his way out, he encounters his boss's daughter, Laura, with whom he had bonded so well recently. When Laura's father asks her to accompany him to a formal event, she responds that she's already scheduled to be with Will. Her father sees through the maneuver but hints that such behavior from his daughter is nothing new. Will and Laura leave together and the dinner invitation turns out to be a simple shared peanut butter sandwich. Laura opens up to Will about her troubled family dynamics. Her mother passed away long ago, her brother died the previous year, and her relationship with her father isn't particularly good either. Will later shares with Laura the incident with the wolf in Vermont and how he has felt different physically ever since, that he feels more alive and stronger that his senses seem heightened. Laura responds with a healthy dose of skepticism, but tells Will that he should consider it a gift if he feels that way. She also invites him to dinner at her place. However, Will suddenly has a weakness attack, and Laura takes him to her place to care for him. The two seem to be growing fond of each other. Night falls, and Will's appearance seems to increasingly resemble that of a wolf, to the point where he goes on a hunt for a deer, the hunt is successful, and the deer becomes easy prey for the wolf-like Will. Afterward, as if coming out of a trance, Will wakes up in the wilderness, unsure of how he feels about his actions. He goes to the doctor for another examination, but the doctor can't really provide any answers. Back at the company, his boss is already waiting, accompanied by a lawyer, as they've learned about Will's plan to poach authors from the company. In this meeting, Will holds his ground and manages to convince his boss not to fire him, allowing him to keep his job. Will visits a man deeply involved in mysticism and spirituality, who also claims knowledge about possession. When Will recounts his experiences, the man prophesizes that Will will transform into a wolf. He directs Will to a shaman who will guide him through the next steps of what is happening to him. Will inquires if there is a way to halt the transformation. The man provides him with an amulet that is meant to aid him on his journey. The man, close to death himself, asks Will to bite him, but Will cannot bring himself to do so. Shortly after, Will arranges to meet with the still-annoyed Laura, 
who is upset that he disappeared without a word from her place that morning. In the night, Will transforms into a wolf again, and when three petty thieves attempt to rob him in the park, things take a rather unpleasant turn for them. The next day, Will signs the contract with his boss and triumphantly presents it to the now outmaneuvered Stuart. To assert dominance, he casually urinates on Stuart's shoes. Suddenly, Will realizes he has a bloody piece of clothing and two severed fingers in his pocket, presumably from the thieves last night, but he has no recollection of it. When his unfaithful wife shows up, she pleads with Will to give their relationship another chance and expresses her desire to come back to him. However, Will remains quite unforgiving and makes it clear he never wants to see her again. When Laura shows up a short while later, she finds Will chained to a radiator with handcuffs because he's afraid of turning into a dangerous wolf at night. He fears he might harm Laura and asks her to leave, but Laura is determined not to be pushed away. She's developed feelings for Will and refuses to be turned aside. She doesn't take Will's fears seriously and believes he's exaggerating. She even helps him remove the handcuffs. Shortly thereafter, the two spend the night together, and Will goes on his nightly hunt again. The next morning, the police arrive with the news that Will's wife was murdered during the night, her throat torn out, leaving Will visibly distraught. When the police officer asks Will where he was the previous night, Laura provides him with an alibi, reassuring Will that she will stand by him. She doesn't believe that Will could have done it, but he suggests the possibility that he may have left the room during the night, an idea Laura refuses to entertain. On the way home, as Will closes his eyes for a little nap, Laura notices the dried dirt on his shoes, and suddenly, everything clicks into place for her. Back at her father's estate, Laura learns that a dead deer was found on the property. When she later receives a call from the police officer, informing her that animal DNA was found at Will's wife's murder scene, Laura starts connecting the dots. Laura and Will decide to lock him in the horse stable overnight, much to the displeasure of the horses. Laura heads to the police station to give her statement. There, she meets Stuart, who now has strangely altered eyes. Stuart becomes quite pushy, and Laura suspects that he has been bitten and is about to transform as well. Meanwhile, Will struggles to resist the transformation in the horse stable. Stuart, in the meantime, tries to convince the police that Will is behind everything and is the perpetrator they're looking for. We see Stuart heading out into the night, Laura returns, and shortly after, Stuart arrives at the estate. When he is rejected by the security personnel, Stuart forcefully gains access to the property. Soon after, there is no doubt about Stuart's transformation. As another guard on the property confronts him, Stuart attacks him. Laura finds the dead guard shortly afterward, and suddenly, Stuart emerges out of nowhere and attacks her as well. Stuart questions Laura and demands the truth about Will from her. She frees herself and defends against Stuart with a fire extinguisher. Will has to watch as the two of them fight, unable to intervene from behind bars. Will discards his amulet and fully embraces being a wolf to be able to help Laura. Just as Stuart is about to overpower Laura, Will comes to her rescue, engaging in a brutal fight with Stuart, both now more wolf than human. The bloody finale continues outside the horse stable. Will appears to gain the upper hand and overpower Stuart, but Stuart still has fight left in him and grabs a pair of garden shears. Just as he's about to attack Will with them, Laura intervenes with a gun. Laura is utterly horrified by what she has just witnessed and by the form Will has become. She tries to appeal to the human side of Will, but Will departs. He is now more wolf than man and too afraid of hurting her. When the police arrive, Laura pretends to be unaware of what has just happened. The evidence suggests that Stuart went mad and killed the security personnel out of revenge for the promotion that never happened. The film ends with the impression that Laura has also been bitten and will transform into a wolf. We are left with a sense of ambiguity, but Laura doesn't seem very saddened by her new fate and looks toward the future with promise. This was the recap of the 1994 film Wolf, starring Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer. I hope you had some fun and I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next video. If you enjoyed this recap, please like and subscribe to not miss any more cult recaps. Until next time.